Hello everyone, welcome back to another video where today I want to talk a little bit about the leaked Disney Plus Doctor Who trailers and the little teasers they revealed to us. Now yeah, this wasn't supposed to be released, but we have had two new trailers from Disney Plus that have now been unlisted slash privated, but luckily some fans have saved and we're just going to go over them, go over what they show, and one thing in particular that I really want to talk about, which you've probably heard about already, but I didn't get to talk about it yesterday because I was at a wedding. But I'm back now and I want to talk about this. So subscribe if you're new, that would be greatly appreciated. YouTube does sometimes glitch and unsubscribe you, so if you want to stay subscribed for regular Doctor Who content, feel free to press that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 25,000 subscribers. Any support is greatly appreciated. But of course, just watching the video helps me out a ton. But with that said, let's just get right into this. So the first and probably most major one is this 30 second promotional video from the Disney Plus YouTube channel, which has been re-uploaded by Agnor. Thank you so much to Agnor for doing this. We're just gonna give it a watch and I'm gonna give you my thoughts. I this Friday. So yeah, obviously immediately it says this Friday because uh, this wasn't supposed to come out. I assume until a week before broadcast, uh, which is quite funny. I am the last also, you can see very quickly in this shot, I know I'm pausing a lot, but that's also partially due to copyright, but in the HD version of this, this is pretty obviously a yellow version of the Sonic Screwdriver, which we've seen before. But yeah, we get this of last the of the Time Lords comment, which people this were um, kind of sort of saying the other day that like, oh, this is, you know, just doing the same thing all over again. But well, I mean, I'm not really sure what people expected Russell to do in this aspect. I mean... It was Chris Chibnall who wiped out Gallifrey again in the first place and turned all the Time Lords into Cybermasters. So, I mean, he technically is the last of the Time Lords, unless you want to count like the Bastard, but even then, he's stuck in the Toymaker's tooth. So, I mean, it is just what the Doctor is at this point. And, I mean, I've seen some people say that, oh, well, technically he's not the last of the Time Lords because he's not a Time Lord anymore. But, I mean, that seems to still be the Doctor's chosen, I guess, identity, even regardless of the Timeless Child. So, personally, I'm completely fine with that line. Dimensions as there are atoms in the universe. So, yeah, you get this really nice sort of exchange between Ruby and Fifteen on the steps of the Regency building, and you can see again the sonic colour change to red here. Obviously it's hard to tell because this is a lower quality rip than the original video, but yeah, you can pretty clearly see red there, which is very interesting. I wonder if they're going to sell like multiple versions of the sonic. So you got dinosaurs, robots, and we get a updated version of the Blinks, which is pretty cool. The Blinks was introduced in the Giggle and was basically the on-site robot for unit, which is pretty cool. Obviously, it was kind of giving me, like, Mr. Smith vibes, and Russell did say in the Giggle commentary that we see him being upgraded throughout the series, and this certainly seems to be one of those upgrades. He seems a bit more high-tech in this trailer than he did in the Giggle, where he seemed a bit more rusted and primitive. Oh Romance is the next thing. So a lot of people are suggesting that this could be a romantic link between the Doctor and Jonathan Groff's character. I definitely think that's a possibility. I'm not certain on it yet, but obviously I did do that theory video a while back, but from what I saw, my theory was based on a uh, fictional wiki, so it might not be true. But even still, I think it's possible that there could be some romance between the two. They definitely seem to be teasing that. And then we get Abbey Road, so they're dancing along Abbey Road, which we've seen before, which looks really cool. Bounty Hunters. So this is interesting. Official confirmation of Jonathan Groff as a bounty hunter. So this kind of, I mean, unless Jack is a bounty hunter earlier on, this kind of puts to bed the idea of this being Captain Jack. A lot of the sort of leaks and rumours I saw for this series a while ago were kind of suggesting that he was a bounty hunter from the future who was hunting the Doctor, which I really like as a plot point. So I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. And Jonathan Groff, obviously, great actor, played the king in Hamilton. Really looking forward to that. <laughs> Aliens, obviously, makes sense. <laughs> Space Babies, Apocalypse, Time Travel. So this is a new shot. You can sort of see they're in the Regency episode, but there's like this triangle that's like almost to another part of time. Like the bottom half looks like the future and then the top half looks like the Regency era. So that's interesting. I'm wondering if that's a piece of the uh, the, the rogue time travelers technology or it's something the doctors just figured out. I'm not sure. And you've got murderers. So you've got Jinx Monsoon murdering a bunch of people as the maestro. Choreography, explosions. 
And then there's a really funny shot in here. I don't know whether I'll get to it because it was uh, they go so quick. You got sand, tears, poles. So you got that woman smacking into a pole from filming. Hugs, snow, and I'm just trying to find the one shot that I want to see. There we go. There's the really funny shot of politics. And it's uh, Millie Gibson's face smiling. So this looks to be from 73 Yards to connect to all the Albion stuff. So I'm really actually interested to see what they do with this. Russell has said that this episode is one of his all-time best. So I'm really interested to see. Obviously, I really enjoy Years and Years as well. And I've heard that this episode is somewhat Black Mirror-esque, according to interviews. So really looking forward to this episode in particular. That Your cosmic is... joy right awaits. Amazing! Oh, right and then there we go. So you got another new sort of look for Shooty there. I don't think we've seen that before as well as Billy Gibson. So I'm not sure whether this is like in the opening to the Beatles episode, perhaps before they get changed into their full Beatles clothes, because I don't recognise these outfits from any other episode we've seen filming thus far. So that is my guess, but we shall see. And then, yeah, Doctor Who streams May 10th from Disney Plus and May 11th here. That's time differences. And yeah, you get this final shot of them looking to have finished, I don't know, maybe some sort of musical at the end of the Beatles episode. You can see EMI uh, studios there, as well as a bunch of cables or confetti, so I'm not sure what's going on there. And yeah, that ends this trailer, but there is one particular shot that has set the internet ablaze. This shot here, which I appreciate is very blurry, but we do have a better picture of it, of Shooty in what looks to be the memory TARDIS from Tales of the TARDIS. Now, Obviously, this wouldn't be the first time Disney put a trailer out with spoilers that aren't in the BBC released. In fact, this happened before with the 60th trailers showing Mel quite prominently on the Disney Plus account, but not on the BBC Doctor Who account. So obviously there's a little bit of difference in how these two like to market these things. But what makes this even more interesting, on another cut down trailer that's unlisted on the Disney Plus account, you can see what looks to be like the same scene, the same shot, with Shooty looking very emotional, but if you look, the TARDIS is once again his standard TARDIS interior. So it looks to me like, I don't think this is a mistake, I don't think you just mistakenly put the memory TARDIS from Tales of the TARDIS in here, I think the memory TARDIS will feature in this series, we'll watch the rest of this teaser and then we'll discuss. I have the whole universe at my fingertips. Yeah, and then again you can see... They've changed the interior once again, even for the exact same shot, to the standard one. So there's definitely some funky business going on here, 100%. Who are you? I'm the doctor. Yeah, most of this is the same, other than like a couple of scenes like this one, where he says like, I don't know whether it's safe, which is nice. Everything is possible. Yeah, that's mostly just a cut down to the stuff we've seen before. Me. Love that shot still. So there you go, that's the second trailer. But yeah, obviously, the big interesting thing that has really kind of set people on fire is the memory TARDIS being very prominently shown in this Disney Plus trailer. So for those of you who aren't aware, the memory TARDIS was the TARDIS featured in Tales of the TARDIS. It essentially acted as this kind of meeting point for companions and past doctors. And it's very vague as to how it's supposed to work, but Russell T. Davis did say that it would make more sense once the series actually aired. So the, the theory at the moment that I'm seeing most prominently is maybe Ruby gets into trouble, Ruby uh, maybe dies, and the Doctor uses the memory TARDIS to try and maybe bring her back or something like that, which is very interesting. I do have a mild concern with this, in the sense that, well, for one thing, Disney Plus viewers didn't see Tales of the TARDIS, so that sort of initial bit of context for this setting is somewhat lost on them. But also beyond that, I do worry about the accessibility angle of this, just from the perspective of a memory TARDIS, a TARDIS composed of memories, is quite a nebulous concept, quite a fan concept, and I worry that new viewers might struggle with it a little bit. There's also the other aspect where people are suggesting that because the memory TARDIS is here, this is going to tie into Russell's proposed Doctorverse idea, which you will know he mentioned in the Giggle commentaries, where he basically said that his theory for all the Doctors is that not only did 14 and 15 by generate, but so too did all other Doctors for every other regeneration. Now this isn't canon, I want to make that clear, 
This is something that Russell himself has said in a commentary, but with the possible reuse and, and re-emphasis on the memory TARDIS in series 14 or season 1, however you want to say it, there is a concern that that will become part of the show. Personally, I don't like the idea of every Doctor by generating. I think it's fine as a one-off thing. I think it would remove a lot of the tension of those previous regenerations if we just know, oh, well, those Doctors continue to exist anyway. Obviously, they do to an extent in the Doctor's subconscious, as we kind of see in Power of the Doctor, but just the idea of them getting to live their own separate lives, I don't love. I'd much prefer it if it was maybe even like an alternate timeline thing, as is also kind of suggested in Tales of the TARDIS, where Sylvester McCoy's Doctor says, in some timelines I die and some I don't. That's fine. I'm fine with alternate timelines, but just the idea that in the main timeline, the Doctor has split off every regeneration thus far, it just cheapens the effect of regeneration, in my opinion. I'm hoping that that's not where they go with it, but given how much Tales of the TARDIS does kind of lend itself to the Doctorverse idea, what with all the Doctors appearing, I do hope that they don't go down that route. I've also seen some people suggest that, like, the memory TARDIS could be the explanation for the bi-generation existing in the first place, essentially meaning that the memory TARDIS being there somehow caused the bi-generation. Again, I don't think that'll be the case, because I think the cause is very much kind of signposted to be the toy maker. but we'll have to wait and see on that. But yeah, my overall kind of thoughts on this is that I worry that introducing things like the memory TARDIS and, you know, potential Doctorverse and all this sort of stuff, if that does tie in, not saying it will necessarily, but obviously you can see how people would draw that connection together. I worry that for season one of a new era, it's not going to feel accessible. We already have several plot threads lingering for the RTD2 era, which I'm okay with, but I do want them to make sure that it stays accessible for new viewers, because this is Doctor Who's biggest chance to relaunch itself to the wider public since 2018. Possibly an even bigger chance when you factor in the international audience Disney brings with it, so I just hope they don't bog it down with stuff that makes it hard for audiences to follow, because I feel like that's been a big issue with Doctor Who for some time now, where it'll start off accessible, and then it'll increasingly get more and more lore-heavy as time progresses to the point where casual viewers just kind of tune out. So I'm really hoping they strike the right balance with that. Let me know what your theories are in the comments below. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you later.